Hey folks, this is Kalani. There are some massive class changes and reworks coming in the next World of Warcraft expansion, The War Within, and with the alpha finally starting its testing cycle, we can see how different classes and specs are changing and hopefully improving. While we won't see any new rows added into the class or specialization talent trees, we are going to see a massive overhaul of some of these trees and a lot of new talents to spice things up. One specialization has 16 new talents coming in, which is kinda bonkers. So let's go over the massive class changes coming in the War Within expansion and see which classes are getting completely reworked. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. The first class on our list of big changes and reworks this week are the Druids. For the class tree, we'll see the same distinct sections for each spec and damage type, so some physical and some magical, and then you'll need to invest points to get those capstones, but the investment is being standardized to two points to get down to the good stuff, so that should create a more even playing field for these talents to compete on. The tree as a whole will see quite a lot of changes, so there are a whole bunch of new talents to browse through, talents are being moved around in the tree, quite a few talents are being just straight up removed, some talents are being reduced down to one point to give you more talents to spend elsewhere, and there's a very interesting change coming through for Astral Influence. It will no longer increase your melee range, and this is actually something that the dev team are reducing or removing for many classes. They want melee range to be more standardized again, so some classes don't have a super long range despite still being classified as a melee. So I'll be very interested to see how that pans out as we head into the war within. Now to put the scope of these changes into perspective, this is the druid class tree on live servers on the left with the new war within setup on the right. So it will be quite different progressing through the tree, especially with all of those one point talents, making it easier to get to the big talents that you really want to pick up. Now for Balanced Druids specifically, you're going to see changes to make their rotation more flexible, introduce more build variety, and tune resource generation. There are a lot of talents coming in that emphasize certain aspects of your rotation, like increasing the duration of celestial alignment, pumping up your dot damage, increasing eclipse bonuses, or introducing different interactions between Wrath and Starfire. Quite a few talents are being redesigned, there's a quick 6% damage increase across the board, some extra damage buffs for Wrath, Starfire, Starfire shooting stars and wild mushrooms, and astral power generation was reduced across the board, your big cooldowns won't last as long, orbital strike damage was nerfed quite badly, and then some talents are being shifted around in the talent tree. For Feral Druids, the goal seems to be to slow down the rotation, slow down energy generation, and make energy usage more tactical. That means you'll probably end up with downtime where you're waiting for your energy to regen, or pooling energy to make your next move. That doesn't sound like a more fun experience to me, but maybe the Feral Druids out there will appreciate it. So to that end, you are going to see a lot of new talents, a lot of talents are getting redesigned, there's a quick 8% buff to all abilities in the middle there, some extra buffs to direct damage, cooldowns won't last as long, and then there are some more targeted nerfs towards the bottom. And then there's also a list of talents that have been removed, so a lot of changes to both druid DPS specs so far in the war within alpha. And then for Resto, the dev team are looking to reduce active keybinds, increase the power of rejuvenation, and change up how Heart of the Wild works. There are quite a few new talents to look at, including more damage to healing conversions, more access to Heart of the Wild, and giving rejuvenation an upfront healing component. The healing of rejuvenation is also being increased by 30%, Grow Guardian's healing is up 15%, there are a few nerfs to certain spells and effects, a few talents are being shifted around, and those talents down at the bottom are all being being plucked out. Moving on, another class with some big changes in this first build are the Evokers, and it's more than just talent and ability changes. In the War Within, Evokers are actually going to start down at level 10 instead of 58, so they are going to start pretty much alongside everyone else. If you want to level up an Evoker quickly and have one ready for the War Within, it might be a good idea to get it done now instead of after these changes go through. Their intro experience has been changed so that they learn talents like everyone else, and they will obviously learn their key spells much earlier. As an interesting side note, this does mean that Drakthea basically start with Dynamic Flight at level 10 via their Soar ability, and they will also have the option to use Static Flight without a mount, so you can use both types of flying with your own wings, which is really cool. 
For Devastation specifically, they're going to get some big changes to Threat Generation. Fire Breath Threat is down 50% and Pyre Threat is down 30%, so you shouldn't need to hold your guns anymore in dungeons or anywhere else for fear of pulling off the tank with that big upfront burst. Preservation is going to see a lot of new talents. A few nodes have been reduced down to one point instead of two, giving you more points to spend elsewhere in the tree, and their talent tree has been shifted around slightly, with Cycle of Life moving down to the bottom as a new capstone talent. Up next we have the Monks, who also made it to the reworked notes list. There are so many changes in here. Apparently the goal is to reduce button bloat, add in some utility, refresh the capstones and give you more options. There are going to be a crazy number of new talents. Rolling through a target can snare it. You can reduce the distance you travel with roll or chi torpedo. Reduce the cooldown of your CCs. Increase movement speed options. There's a talent to add an enrage dispel to paralysis. More CC cooldown reduction. Some defensive and self-sustained talents. And you can even get a double jump as a monk. There are new cap stones for you to check out and a whole bunch of talents have been redesigned. Talents are also shifting around quite a bit and a lot of talents have been changed to be one pointers. If you're curious about what was pulled out, there's also a list of talents that were removed with these changes if that helps you understand what's gone from the talent tree that you're going to see on live servers. All in all, a crazy number of changes for the monk class tree and monk class as a whole. With there being so many changes, it is worth taking a look at the class tree on live or retail servers and then comparing it to the new tree on alpha. You can see there's quite a bit going on here with more capstone talents to pick and choose from, so it's going to be really interesting seeing how this all comes together when the War Within goes live. Now for Mistweavers specifically, they're going to lose Essence font entirely, but there are some changes to help address the value of Mastery and some extra tools to fill in the gap that Essence font is going to leave. So there are quite a few new talents, some talents have been redesigned, there are some big buffs to Gust of Mist, Invigorating Mist and Vivify, and you can see at the bottom that Essence font, Upwelling, Font of Life and Clouded Focus have all been removed. Windwalkers also have a huge list of changes, probably the longest list I've seen in a while, which could either be a really really good thing, or just a really bad thing, but let's see what's changing. Their main focus is going to be on haste and mastery stats falling behind, Jadefire stomps usability, the touch of death gameplay focus, resource bloat, auto attack rate, and adding more pronounced themes. The changes include 16 new talents, which is kind of insane, some of them are similar to previous previous bonuses that we've seen before, but there are some new tools in here as well. Quite a few increase the damage and potential of Blackout Kick and its procs, there are some passive damage increased debuffs, Haste can now affect Fists of Fury damage, and there's some other interesting new talents to look through. Some other talents have been redesigned, Mastery is going to be 20% more effective, some abilities are being made baseline like Touch of Karma, other abilities and talents will have additional effects, and as you might expect, quite a few talents are also just one point now, and then 11 talents are being removed from the tree. So a very long list of changes, let's just hope they end up being good changes when the dust settles. Moving on we come to the Paladins. There are only two changes for the class tree, multiple applications of Greater Judgment can overlap, which is a great change, and then Glyph of the Luminous Charger only works while Crusader Aura is active. For Holy, Light of the Martyr is being replaced with a passive spell, Throughput from Beacons is being moved into baseline spells, and Blessing of Summer is being redesigned as well. There are some new talents, quite a few redesigns, Beacon is going to transfer less healing, there are some big buffs to various healing spells, Blessing of Sacrifice won't be available due to cooldown reduction nerfs, some talents have been shifted around, and Light's Hammer has been removed. For Retribution, the dev team want to make secondary stats more appealing, and they want some more overlap between single target and AoE talent setups. There's a new talent that lets Truth Wake interact with crits in a meaningful way, a lot of talents have been redesigned to also interact with secondary stats or work in different ways, Truth's Wake will now be a baseline effect of Wake of Ashes, Mastery was renamed and changed slightly, there are even more talent redesigns, and then Execution Sentence was reduced down to 20% from 30%, but will no longer count as a damage over time effect. And then the last class with a long list of notes this week are the Warriors. The class tree has been significantly rearranged, we'll take a peek at that in just a moment. Berserker Rage will now be auto-learned at level 12, there are some changes to Thunderclap and Slam, Shockwave no longer generates rage, and some other talents had their rage generation removed or reduced, and we can see some talents have been removed. 
Let's compare that class tree real quick. You can see there's a lot more going on with the alpha tree, and Shockwave especially has been moved up to be more available much earlier for every spec. This also reduces the capstone talents and lets you spend some more points further up the tree. It's definitely very different, so it's going to be interesting tinkering around with it when everything goes live. For arms specifically, the dev team are looking to adjust rage costs and generation to make rage management more interesting while providing additional build and rotation options. So you're going to see the talent tree move around quite a bit, there are a couple of new talents being added in, several talents have been redesigned, rage generation and rage costs have been reduced for several abilities, cleave damage was increased while whirlwind damage was decreased, there are quite a few changes to abilities and talents that interact with overpower, ravager will be a choice node with bladestorm, and a couple of talents have been removed. For Fury specifically, the dev team want both Raging Blow and Bloodthirst to be key parts of your rotation while maintaining build choice and diversity. So the tree will see a moderate rearrangement, there's a new talent to empower Enrage, Fury will get Bladestorm as a choice node with Ravager, a few talents have changed and some have been removed. And then Protection has a handful of changes, but nowhere near as many as the other specs in this video. Whirlwind, Rage, Cost and Damage were reduced, and Rend, Rage, Cost was reduced as well. Now that's all of the classes with a long detailed list of changes for this week. If your class or spec wasn't mentioned here, that just means it didn't have any large sweeping changes in this first alpha build, so keep an eye out for more alpha builds and updates as the weeks go by. There are some other classes with some updates coming soon, so they weren't included in this video and we don't have specific notes, but we do have blue posts going over the plans for three other classes. For the Death Knights, the dev team are looking to reduce the resource flooding for each spec and reduce the throughput of nodes towards the end of the tree by shifting things around a bit. For Blood specifically, they're looking to shift around the talent trees and maybe make some spec talents baseline to increase build diversity and improve the leveling experience. For Frost, they're looking at Breath of Syndragosa and getting it back to around a 30 second duration to allow them to better balance it. Rune of Hysteria will see an update, Frostworm's Fury will probably move up in the tree, and Frost might see some new capstone talents. And then for Unholy, they want to reduce the complexity of the opener especially, as well as reducing the number of things Holy needs to keep track of. Gargoyle might get a choice node to allow for more sustained damage, Sudden Doom and Diseases will be revisited, and Festering Wounds might be made easier to play with and around, including allowing Fester Might stacks to overlap like Iron Fur. Then for mages, the dev team want to make sure you can acquire each spec's core gameplay with less talent point investment to free up those points for other choices. They also want to simplify rotations, provide tools to help you adapt to changes in encounters, and provide competitive choice nodes that allow for simpler playstyles. For the class tree, there's only one big change, Temporal Warp will be removed, so no more double lusting for the mages. For Arcane specifically, it looks like their main focus will be making it simpler to play. Having to manage your mana while keeping an eye on everything else like cooldowns makes Arcane more complex, so they're redesigning some aspects and looking at giving Arcane Mage more interesting procs to break up their gameplay. For Fire Mage, they're looking at more talent options, especially for AoE, and they're going to cull some maintenance buffs. Fire should also be the first spec to see some of these changes hit Alpha. And then for Frost, they're mostly happy, but will be introducing a new build option while free up some talent points. And then last but not least, the Warlock Blue Post. Their core goals for Warlocks moving forward and to ensure each capstone is interesting and exciting, reduce the number of throughput talents to free up utility choices, and reduce the number of ranks for talents that don't really need them. For Affliction, they want to redesign, introduce, and remove talents to remove friction between single target and multi target choices. Demonology will get a redesign for Doom, and then looking at long cooldowns and resource flooding especially. And then Destruction will see changes to how they play in multi target situations with changes to Cataclysm and Soulfire on the table. Now remember that all of these changes are for the War Within alpha build, so you're not going to see them on live servers for quite a while, and with this being the very first alpha build, it is all subject to change. So take a look through, see what looks good, see what maybe doesn't, and be sure to give your feedback on the new direction the dev team are taking with some of these classes and specs. That's the best way to shape your class and spec, and make sure it's actually fun when we start our adventures in the War Within. 
Something else to consider is that a huge part of how a class will play in the War Within are hero talents. Depending on which hero talent set you pick up, different talents or setups might end up being more powerful, and your rotation may change to emphasise certain spells or abilities. If you're curious, this is the current list of hero talents that are available to test in this first alpha build, so all three for Death Knight, only one for Demon Hunter, Druid has all four available, Evoker has all three of their specs, Hunters have all three as well, all the mage ones are there, Monk does have all three but Master of Harmony isn't fully implemented, Paladins have all three, Priests only have two of theirs, Rogues only have one so far, Shams are also stuck with just one, Warlocks have all three, and all three Warrior Hero talents are currently available, so the vast majority of Hero talent sets are in a testable state, which is quite impressive when you consider this is the very first alpha build and we have a long testing cycle ahead of us. If you want to see some of these Hero talents in action, let me know in the comment section below and we'll see what we can put together. But those are our first round of massive class changes and reworks for the War Within expansion. What do you think from what you've seen so far? Are there any classes or specs that you hope get a big rework, or at least see some more attention as we head into the War Within? And are there any classes you hope don't change that much between now and the next expansion? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun and as always I will see you next time.